Hi again to everybody. Uh, my name is Johannes uh, and Gunther beside me. We are from the Center of Information Modeling uh, from the University of Graz and we will give you uh, a, a short report uh, from our experience in the migration pro project from Fedora 3 to Fedora at the moment uh, 4.7. We are using Fedora since 18 years. We start with our first uh, production system uh, with version Fedora 2. Uh, and it, it is the third uh, migration uh, that we are doing uh, from one uh, Fedora version to another Fedora version. Uh, first, um, uh, I, I want to describe a little bit the infrastructure that we, that, uh, we want to, to this, uh, migrate. Our infrastructure is similar like uh, uh, FIDRA or Islandora, uh, not only um, uh, uh, out of the box using of Fedora, uh, we have a an, uh, an, uh, long-term preservation ecosystem uh, in which we are using uh, many other components of, uh, of other uh, open source uh, projects. Uh, then uh, we want to talk a little bit about our understanding of content models. We're using in our framework a concept uh, uh, that is typical for Fedora 3 called content models. And it, this uh, concept is very important for our infrastructure. So uh, we, uh, I will give you some examples how we use content models in our infrastructure. Uh, then uh, we will talk about our goals uh, in the, our migration project. And at last, uh, Gunther will talk about uh, a little bit about our experience in using Docker and Kubernetes in hosting our infrastructure. Uh, this, the shift to the new generation of Fedora is not only a new version, we often said, uh, it's a new, uh, it's, an, it's a new, it's a paradigm shift in using Fedora and also on the side of the operating system, the virtualization is a paradigm shift in using, uh, in using and hosting uh, different services. So uh, in the last four years, we had a lot to learn uh, new things. Uh, and uh, we will talk a little bit about this experience. For us, Fedora is not only uh, uh, um, out of the box repository, I have mentioned in the, uh, uh, it before. For us, Fedora is a storage layer in a very complex system. Uh, where we store uh, research data uh, produced in uh, uh, varying uh, uh, projects in the context of digital humanities. Uh, every time it's possible, we store data in XML uh, formats for different standards like TI and so on. Uh, and we use this uh, XML data in uh, visualizations and representations of this data uh, in web context. Yeah, uh, our repository has uh, at the moment, uh, our Fedora 3 repository has at the moment uh, uh, 114,000 uh, digital objects. Uh, our digital objects are not only uh, data streams, uh, these digital objects are compound digital objects. Uh, one object sometimes uh, can contain a hundred and more uh, different data streams. I will explain it a little bit later. Uh, we have done our job. Uh, it means that we have a, a Fedora 4.7 representation of all this data. Uh, but not in a uh, production system. Uh, we are in a test, uh, in a test phase, uh, in, in trying to uh, uh, to uh, learn about uh, the new things in Fedora in the new generation of Fedora. Uh, let us make a little uh, a little few uh, few uh, of our infrastructure. In the core of this infrastructure, we use Fedora at the moment, we use Fedora 4 as a storage layer. Uh, 
all services uh, you see here uh, not directly used by the user of the framework. All services are triggered in uploading uh, data uh, in the repository by the users. Uh, yeah. Next step, uh, what means content models? Content models uh, means a, a structural definition for a type of digital objects. For example, in our, um, in our repository, we store manuscripts or we store uh, in an image collection complex, uh, complex compound objects that describe uh, these, uh, these artifacts that are stored uh, in the repository. Here an example. We have an, uh, a project uh, in our repository uh, that uh, consists of uh, uh, different uh, account books from different periods in this, uh, uh, in this repository. These uh, objects of this account books collection consists of, uh, consists of the TI uh, encoded document of this uh, single account books, but also uh, of the uh, facsimiles of the single pages of this uh, of this count books and the metadata uh, uh, of this uh, account books, also of uh, semantic data extracted from the TI uh, representation of this account books that are stored in the Placecraft triple store that is embedded in our uh, uh, repository ecosystem. Uh, these are a, 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 a simple example of such an object in our, uh, in our repository. And during the ingest of the documents uh, and during the, uh, the dissemination of the, of the objects, uh, there uh, are triggered many workflows in the systems. And all these all this workflows described in our system uh, in these content models. Here, another example you see here, uh, the same representation of this account book, uh, account book, book object in a uh, mirror door viewer. Uh, uh, the basic is a triple IF mani manifest uh, that, is, that is also stored in this compound object of this account book. Or here you see uh, an overview uh, over, over uh, uh, different uh, 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 account books. Yeah, uh, 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 an overview of, of different account books. Uh, this overview uh, is not uh, static stored in our repository. Uh, this overview is produced during the request of this data. Uh, and represent the actual uh, situation uh, of, uh, of uh, the data in the repository. Uh, when uh, some uh, contributor of this project is uploading uh, a new uh, version of the of a, of a account book, in the, in the moment I speak here and I make a, a reload of this page, uh, then this uh, visualization represents the actual status uh, of the data in the repository. This is uh, one example, uh, uh, one example of uh, data that we are store in our repository. We have different uh, content models defined, defined in our system for different uh, uh, metadata standards. You see here content models for TI, for Lido, for MEI, for GML, for uh, geosparking data, for SCOTS, for ontologies for RDF data and so on, and also content models for aggregated content that consists of uh, more than uh, one object of the, um, of the uh, uh, metadata standard objects uh, here in this list, uh, foreign context, corpuses, or query objects. Yeah, so uh, this is one challenge of the migration of the system from Fedora, three in the next generation to Fedora 4.7. Uh, we have different projects with 
very different uh, requirements uh, in, uh, in our repository. And we want to migrate this whole, uh, 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 this whole uh, project without any manual uh, uh, doing migration by, uh, by the single projects. Uh, but we also want to hold our mind open for new possibilities arising with a new Fedora generation. Uh, here you have a, um, a, an example for the representation uh, of uh, such an account book under Fedora 4.7. We have a main node and uh, the data model of our, of our new uh, Fedora <coughs> version uh, is orientated on the Portland common data model. Uh, so we have a main node where we store uh, the, uh, the metadata of uh, an object uh, and all workflows uh, that triggered for an object are defined and stored as uh, properties in the RDF main node uh, of this uh, of this object. Yeah, we have also a, a client, uh, a Java-based client that handles all these uh, workflows, uh, ingest workflows uh, needed when you store research data, uh, research data in the repository. Yeah, so I will take over here and uh, switch focus a little bit from this uh, conceptual technical view to a more DevOps uh, view. Uh, you have seen this slide before. Johannes uh, explained that uh, our infrastructure is uh, heavily based on uh, services. So each rectangle uh, you see here is a, is a service in our infrastructure. And uh, we did another step. We put every uh, service you see here into its own Docker container. So the question now uh, will be why, for God's sake, did we? Uh, that, that, uh, from, from the experience we, we, we took during the last, I don't know, two years or so, uh, you can sub summarize this with one word, it's isolation. Uh, using Docker containers has a lot of uh, advantages. Uh, in which, which are also some sort of, of isolation or, or, or reproducibility, like the isolation on the OS level. Uh, you have the different processes running each in its own container, so they are separated uh, from each other, of course, still running on the, on the same kernel, but uh, separated from each other, which has some advantages. I will come back a little bit uh, later. If you need it, you can say the same uh, about the, the networking level. It's very easy to spawn up uh, different virtual networks. So you can put selectively containers into different uh, uh, networks if you uh, need to. Um, also an important thing for us, uh, uh, grounded on the experience uh, we had with the old system, the, the, the Fedora 3 version we are running since, since, years, since years now, is uh, that uh, putting everything in containers uh, uh, makes handling of dependencies. For example, to, to use specific uh, library, versions of a library, uh, much, much easier because you can use different uh, versions of a library on the same machine as long as you keep them in different uh, containers. Uh, a thing which gave us a headache from time to time in the past, but this is uh, a thing totally solved. And if, if you see this a little bit broader, uh, you could not only handle dependencies, of course, in containers, but also contexts uh, like, like, I don't know, uh, uh, environment variables or dependencies from, from, from specific operating systems or versions. Uh, all this is very, very good abstracted in the, uh, abstracted in the Docker uh, environment. And uh, this is something we really uh, liked in the process of, of learning all this kind of uh, stuff, especially during development. Uh, each developer, of course, has uh, the same environment as, as long as he uses the same uh, uh, image, uh, so in the form of a container. Uh, just to illustrate this, Johannes uh, prefers to do his work on a Mac. Uh, I'm a, a Linux fanboy, and Fabio, the colleague uh, who is on vacation at, uh, this week, 
uh, switches between Linux and, and Windows. And since we started using uh, Docker containers, everything goes much more smooth than it used to be uh, before. The same, of course, is true for testing. Uh, you have uh, reproducible contexts for testing, but you can also change contexts if you need to, for example, for, for mocking or whatever. And uh, of course, uh, replacing a service uh, on the running system, on the production system is also much easier because you kill one uh, container and uh, start the new version of it with one command. Of course, using uh, such a thing also has some disadvantages uh, like uh, debugging and uh, uh, identifying problems became a little bit more uh, complicated. But I guess this has mostly to do with the service space architecture. So you have to find out uh, the, the flow of data between the services and uh, the, the, the using a containerized uh, environment is not a big problem in this context. One thing uh, which uh, little surprised me a little bit as a sysadmin was uh, uh, that uh, a lot of things uh, which are very normal for, for system administration have to be rethought as soon as you uh, move over to a containerized environment. These are things like uh, monitoring, locking, uh, managing uh, security updates and, and a lot more things. Uh, so I spent much more time uh, doing this, uh, replanning this kind of stuff uh, than I thought I would need to. Yeah, and on the last slide, uh, um, some words about uh, orchestration and clustering. Uh, at the moment, we decided to use uh, container-based uh, environment. Of course, the idea, the idea came up uh, to put everything in a cluster so to don't have single machines responsible for specific services, but uh, you have a cluster where you can run all the services uh, together. Uh, and have things like load balancing and whatever. Uh, we started using uh, Docker uh, Swarm and used it for quite some time. And in principle, we had it running. We had some, some minor problems using uh, the network uh, stack, but uh, in principle, we had it running and then uh, Docker Inc. ran into financial problems and uh, we were thinking if it would be a good idea to set on a technology uh, provided by a company which has uh, which was, which it was not clear if it would be there in two years or three years. Uh, so um, we started to take a closer look on, on Kubernetes. Uh, it was a little bit intimidating at the beginning, but it's not uh, that bad as soon as you get uh, into it, just for those who have never heard about Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a technology uh, software used, uh, created by Google, but the released on the open source uh, uh, license. Um, Kubernetes has in principle two tasks. One is to provide a cluster, so uh, a set of machines uh, together in one uh, cluster, and to orchestrate containers inside uh, this cluster, uh, which means, for example, uh, that uh, Kubernetes takes care of uh, balancing. So if Kubernetes finds out that one service is under heavy load, it uh, and it has some, some other computers, some other nodes which uh, have less node, it will just move this uh, container uh, to the other uh, node, to the other computer. Or it can also scale out, especially easy to do for, for stateless services. This means if one service, like some, some, some computation service, uh, gets uh, under heavy load, it will spawn up uh, one or even more additional uh, uh, containers on different nodes. So it's very easy uh, to, 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 to scale out, especially as uh, Kubernetes also handles this. Uh, 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 so uh, forgot the term, sorry. Um, yeah, it takes care of everything. So uh, load balancing is the thing I forgot to go into. So uh, all these things are done automatically as soon as they are uh, configured. I will uh, stop here raising uh, Kubernetes because uh, uh, of course it's not that, that easy, uh, not all, everything is shiny there. Uh, it definitely puts on an additional layer, uh, thick layer of, of complexity on our system. Uh, we're still struggling from time to time yet. Uh, you have to learn some, some new concepts 
there's a lot of new terminology. You have a lot of tools you have to use uh, in a Kubernetes environment. But as I said before, we are uh, we are very far now, and uh, we are we are <laughs> happy to have it. Uh, there's just one thing: um, don't try to run your own Kubernetes cluster. Uh, try to use something which is provided by on the cloud or by someone else. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do this at the moment for some uh, uh, quality and other things at our university. So uh, we had we have to run it at the moment. It's it's not funny, and uh, I wouldn't suggest to do so. And I'm quite sure that uh, we will get rid of this within the next years as soon as some other services come up. But uh, at the moment, it's not so cool. But to sum it up, it's nice to have such such an infrastructure. You have a lot of advantages. And it's definitely worth uh, spending some time on this kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. We are looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Uh, we don't have so much time actually before the break, but there are already two questions in the chat and I'd like to read them out. So the first one is from Thomas and he asks if the Java client uh, is a desktop graphical user interface application or a web application. It's a Java uh, desktop GUI application, but it is a thin client. Uh, the FC Gate uh, Spring Boot service uh, contains the whole logic uh, management and uh, a legacy layer uh, that is handled the Fedora 3 requests uh, to our Fedora 4.7 4 repository. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and the second one is from Robin. Um, what is the most significant complexity with communication, having to establish APIs? Uh, yeah, we, we are using uh, we are using for the dissemination for the, for the dissemination uh, workflows. We are using the API extension archi architecture a community tool of for Fedora four and greater. Uh, and uh, we are using these components for realizing uh, requests to our Fedora repository uh, in our content models. Thank you. Um, and are there any more questions? <laughs> 